I'll send the playlist. Nice. Okay, great. So we're going to start in a child's pose. So get yourself sorted. Take your time getting yourself in there. I always like to do a wide knees child's pose. You can find your knees as wide as your mat. Your big toes will touch. Your hips will try to reach down towards your heels. And then you'll let your torso and your chest just rest in between your knees or in between your legs. And your forehead can come down to the mat. Nice. Cool. I know we had a request from Julia for hips, but if at any point someone wants to do anything else, let me know. <laughs> nice. Oh dear, I have to stop saying that word. Sorry, Kate. Okay, so you'll find your forehead on the ground. You could already start letting your forehead rock a little bit right and left too, just to give it a little bit of a massage. You can see if you can extend your arms a little bit longer just to see if you can create more space in your torso. And just begin to notice your breath, seeing how much you can fill up through your front body, through your belly and your chest, all the way up to your head, and then exhaling all the air out. And just notice how fast you're breathing. Maybe your breathing is a little bit quick. Maybe it's really nice and slow. But just notice what it is. We'll try to match breath to movement throughout class. So as we go, we'll call out when to inhale and exhale, but also as you're moving, do what's most natural to you. Take one more inhale and exhale here. And then on your next inhale, you'll look up and look out in front of you and you'll have your hands come up onto fingertips. So you can imagine you have oranges underneath your palms and then you'll walk your hands all the way up and over to the right. And as you're coming here, really try to press that left hip back even more to the left heel as you reach those left fingertips up, up and over. So it's like your rainbow arcing all the way up and over to the right. Yeah, and your head can drop again. You can shake it out if it doesn't touch the floor. Inhaling into the length of the left side body. Exhaling, see if you can walk those fingertips up and over a little bit more, really reaching out. Take one more inhale, one more exhale. Then you can look up and out again and walk your hands all the way up and over to the left. So we we're just at two o'clock on a clock face and now we're kind of at 10 o'clock on a clock face. Right fingertips reach up and over as that right hip comes back and tries to anchor down into your right heel. Inhaling and exhaling into the opening of the right side body, the right armpit. As we lift up our arms, we can almost feel like we're opening up a window and trying to ventilate our bodies by moving through and creating space in our armpits and our side body. Take one more inhale here, one more exhale. Then you'll walk yourself back to center. See if you can walk your fingertips out a little bit more. Nice. Head comes down one more time. And then you'll bring yourself up into whatever this looks like. So it's okay if your hips are kind of forward or back, or if you're in like an elongated, like tabletop type shape. And then you'll just rock back and forth from child's pose into a lazy up dog. And your knees can come up, they can stay down. Just beginning to bring that undulation into the spine for the first time today, or second or third, depending what time of day it is for you. We have some peeps in Berlin and Amsterdam and then New York and I think Kate's in Connecticut. So such a global crew, take one more. And then the next time you come back into your child's pose and wanna come back into that up dog, you'll formalize your tabletop. So we always like to find our hands underneath our shoulders, our knees underneath our hips. So you're making a really nice rectangle with your body. And then we'll come into our cats and cows. So as you inhale, you'll bring your chest down your head. You'll come look up 
And then as you exhale, you'll round your spine, look towards your belly. And then you'll take this at whatever pace you want. We'll stay here for a bit of time just because I like staying in my cat cows for a while because as you stay in something longer, you can learn more about how you're moving. So as you inhale, you arch, you exhale, you round. Notice how you're pressing each finger down to the mat. All 10 fingers are facing forward. You have equal weight on each knuckle of each hand. And then also notice how you're pressing the tops of the feet down. So can you feel the pinky toenails also pressing down to the ground so you know you're really trying to make as much contact as you can with the tops of the feet down to the mat. Keep going with your cat cows, but switch up your speed. So if you're going kind of slow, switch it up and go kind of fast. And that once again, matching inhale and exhale to movement. So it's kind of like a breathing exercise. Nice. Building some heat, moving things around. If we drank a lot last night, this was nice to just start getting everything up and out and detoxing ourselves. Take this at whatever speed you're going for, for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then you'll come back to center. You can reorient yourself if you need. And then we'll flip our hands around 180 degrees. So you'll flip your right hand around to the right so that the back of your wrist comes facing towards the front of your mat. And then you'll flip the left one around to the left so the back of the left wrist comes facing towards the front of your mat. And if this feels like too much, you can just flip your hands out so that they come to 90 degrees. So they look like they're facing out like that. And then you'll take circles around with your hips to the right. Nice. I know Julia and Anna have done this before. Heather and Nam, I don't know if you've done this before, but this is so good for your wrist to counteract all the texting and typing we do all day on our computers. As you're here, think of pressing out a little bit more into the thumb knuckle side of each hand. Notice where you're looking. Are you looking down towards your knees or out towards the floor in front of you? I will tell a story and maybe it will distract you. So yesterday I went to go see the founder of Katona Yoga. Her name is Naveen and she's an amazing, wonderful lady. And one thing that I feel like she said, and I don't know if Kate, you were in the room when she said this during a training or something, but she, we were doing this and she was, like, everyone was looking back towards their knees. You can switch direction, go to the left. And she was like, there's nothing interesting in your crotch. And we were like, okay, but that's what I think about every time I do this. And I notice myself looking back towards my knees. So you can think of Naveen saying not to look back at your crotch and just look forward. Keep going to the left. See if you can change up the size of your circle if you want. Notice where your hands are. And then come back to center. Flip your hands back around the normal way, but try not to shake them and just let your hands ground down into the floor. So it's like we're electricity and we're grounding ourselves down to not get too much of a shock. Nice. From there, you're gonna come up on your fingertips again. Move your right knee to the center of your mat and just cross your left knee behind it. So your knees are kissing. There's no space in between your knees. Your feet can kind of come also to the width of your mat or if you want to measure out hip width distance behind you, that's also okay too. Then once again, look down and out and then you'll kind of hula hoop your hips to the right. So we're just moving our pelvis to the right as if you're stirring something up with your pelvis. Yeah, so we're just getting into different parts of our hip joint and our wrists in this. If fingertips at all feels like it's too much, feel free to come back down to the palm of your hands. Or if you do have two blocks, you can always try putting a block under a hand and see what that feels like. Nice. And then go to the left. Moving your pelvis around. Good. Still thinking of hips over knees. Still thinking of the tops of both feet pressing down into the floor. Take one more circle to the left. Come back down onto your palms of your hands. Unravel your knees. And then you can do the other side. So just hook that right knee behind your left knee. Come back up on the fingertips. And then this time start circling to the left. And notice which way feels easier. 
our hips are, oh, I was about to say something incorrect that Kate Smith busted to me earlier this week. I was gonna say the hips are our biggest joint in our body, but that's wrong because that's what our knees are. But our hips do a lot for us every single day, holding us up, helping us walk around. So this helps mobilize them and bring some synovial fluid into the joint as we start to heat it up. And then turn your hips to the right. This way is hard for me. So we just notice which way of these four felt easiest to do, more natural. That's probably what your habit is, but it's nice to do something in habitual as well. Try something new. Take one more circle. Come back down onto the palms of your hands. Unravel your knees. Take any sort of little wiggle movement, cat cow, that feels good now just to rinse it all out. Then you'll find your hands about a palm print in front of where they are. You'll tuck your toes up or your tuck your toes under and then find your way into a plank pose. So notice if you had to move your feet back, notice if you had to move your hands underneath your shoulders in a different way. And then just rock yourself forward and back. Still thinking about looking down and out because we want our necks to be nice and long. We don't want our next chin or we don't want our necks tucked. And our chin's tucked. We do that enough all day staring at our phones. And then on your next inhale, bend your knees and stick your butt up to the sky and come into your first down dog. And then immediately pedal it out. So pedal it out from right to left. You can bend into one knee, you can bend into the other. Move it all around. You can shake your head out, yes to no. Keep moving. You can lift an arm, you can lift a leg. Just do anything that feels good just to get any sort of snap crackles and pops out. Nice. Moving it all around. Cool. And then on your next inhale, begin to find some visible stillness in your dog. So I always like to find a dog with slightly bent knees. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna slightly bend your knees, you're gonna press down strongly into your hands, wrap your armpits in towards your heart. So that's kind of like bringing the inner elbow crease up towards the ceiling. Your ears stay in line with your biceps. Energy shoots up to the sky. The six bones of your butt try to spear up into the ceiling. And then energy can just travel down the backs of your legs. Knees are slightly bent and then energy goes out through the heels. So pressing down to lift up and then it all can wander fall back down. One more inhale, one more exhale. And then you'll place your knees back down to the ground. Keep your toes tucked. Bring your knees together. Bring your big toes together. And then sit up on your heels. This one might be mean for Nam because she ran the marathon on Sunday. And your feet might be like, ow. But this is really good for you. Untuck the left. Untuck each of your pinky toes to make sure everything's tucked under. And then we're just going to sit here and hang out. Just kidding. We can do something. But... I like, and I think I learned this from Kate, you're gonna interlace your hands in front of you, press them, press the palms out in front of you and then lift them up and over. You can't really see mine because, yeah, but it's fine. And then you're gonna begin to make circles behind your head, keeping your chin level to the ground. This we call shoulder flossing. So just as we floss our teeth, we like to floss our shoulders to get any little gunk out that we can. Nice. And then do the other direction. Kate, I hope you're tallying how many times I say nice so then it can only be lower in the future. <laughs> nice. I actually, I actually am. That's why I'm also camera off because I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be like 100. And then in three weeks, it's going to be three or something, I hope. Take one more to the left. Reach those arms up and then just let your arms completely drop down. Give your shoulders a little wiggle. Come back down onto your hands and knees. Untuck the toes this time. This is really nice to do with blocks if you have them. I only have one, so I'm not going to do it. But if you do have blocks, you can bring them to either side and then lift your knees up. I'm going to put my fingertips behind me and just lift one knee up at a time just because I'm lacking blocks today. Yeah. So this just gets the other side of the ankle. This is really good to 
Just take a moment to give a second to our feet. Nice. Ah. Okay, cool. Right knee, left knee, take a couple more. Then come back to center. Come back to what you think your down dog should be, but pass through a plank pose just to measure it out. And then bend your knees and stick your butt up. Come to your down dog and notice if your feet feel any different. Do you feel like you can have more space gripping or more space in your feet gripping the floor? You might feel a little bit more open just by doing that. You can find a couple little more movements and then once again, formalize your dog. Wrap the armpits in towards the heart, those elbow inner elbow points try to go towards the ceiling. It's like bend in the knees, stick your butt up to the sky. Nice. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog slip. So keep those right toes down, left knee stays nice and bent, right heel is shooting up to the sky, and then step your right foot to your right thumb. Next, place that back knee down, untuck the toes. Right knee's right on top of right ankle. So we have a nice 90 degree angle in that front knee. I always like to try to find my right knee attached to my right armpit. So my knee fits into my armpit like a ball and mid fit. That's when you know you have really good contact with your upper body and your lower body. And then you'll reach your arms forward and out and find yourself an Anjaneyasana. Okay, cool. Once again, you can think about that left pinky toe really pressing down like we did in the cats and cows, because that left pinky toe will also encourage your hips to become really nice and square. So it's like your hips are a car, your and your headlights are both facing forward. From here, you can hook your thumbs up overhead and just try to reach up for something like your apple picking. I know you can't see my hands, but you can. Looks like this. Take one more inhale here, one more exhale, and then hands can come down to frame your front foot. Hands can come on fingertips, or if you have blocks, you can use one or two blocks. And then you'll bring your hips back, you'll lift those right toes up, and then you'll let your toes rock right and left. This is also really good if you were running recently, and even not for runners, but this is called a runner stretch. So it's good for that. Your hamstrings are tight. I like rocking my toes or turning them in and out so I can try to get even more parts of my hamstring a little bit more opened up. Thinking about the top of that left foot. And then you'll step back into that right foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and then step that left foot up to meet your right. So coming to our first forward fold at the front of the mat, I like finding my feet at hips with distance just so then you feel like you have more surface area and more space to stand on to feel more stable. So you can find that by putting two fists in between your arches and then just let your head dangle over. Now you can really not try to do anything with your neck and your head. You can once again, shake it out, yes and no. You can rock forward and back on your feet or right and left. Just imagining that you're some sort of willow tree blowing in the wind as you're here, nothing formal. One more inhale, one more exhale, and then I'm going to roll up in a very weird right way, but just roll up to stand whenever you're ready. Stacking vertebra on top of vertebra so that you're unrolling yourself as if you're unraveling wrapping paper or toilet paper or anything else, and you get to the end. Your head is last to lift. Then you can just give yourself a little bit of a shake. Stay standing. I'm just kneeling because... I need a better situation here, but New York apartments are small. On your next inhale, lift your arms up, press palms together, look up, and exhale, forward fold over your legs. So forward fold back over your legs, find yourself in your forward fold again, hands come down, and then step or hop your way back to your downward facing dog. Nice. All of my classes are yoga, yoga inspired, or katona yoga inspired so instead of doing a chaturanga we're going to move forward and through into a top toed up dog so you'll bring your body forward and through back into that plank pose and then just let your hips dip a little bit and let your chest come through your arms legs stay really nice and strong in your plank pose and then bend your knees and stick your butt up down dog nice take one more of those roll your body forward and through to plank move into that up dog 
and then back to your down dog. Right. Inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split. Slight bend in that right knee, still heels lifting up of that left heel to the sky, and then step your left foot to your left thumb. Place your back knee down, untuck the toes, find yourself in your nice Anjane Asana. Top of that back foot is pressing down. You can find that connection of armpit to knee, and then when you're ready, arms reach forward and out. Arms come up by your ears. Hips are pressing forward, so we're really making a nice crescent moon-like shape here. And then you can hook your thumbs and then switch which thumb is hooked on top. Nice. <laughs> Arms reaching up, fingertips reaching up, reaching up for something, whether it's apples or anything else. Moving right side and left side a little bit up more and more, creating more space. And then hands come down to frame your front foot. Hands can come on blocks if you want. Otherwise, left toes lift up, hips come back. And then you're in that runner stretch again. Toes can be turned in and out as you see fit, whatever feels best here. If you want to just stay in the still like runner stretch, you can just completely drop your head to just depends on how your hamstrings are feeling. I also always still kind of have a slight bend here, which is nice just to make sure that your knee doesn't fully lock out. So it's totally okay to not have straight legs. In fact, probably prefer. One more inhale, one more exhale, bend back into that left foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and then step that right foot up to meet your left. Find your hip width distance forward, fold again. This time you can use your hands, you can try to just feel it, and then test out how you did. And then this time you'll interlace your hands at the base of your spine and let your hands hang over. See if you can keep the base of your palms together. Totally fine. If not, just something that you can work towards too. Head can shake out, yes and no. Arms still come forward a little bit more. You can lift up the right shoulder a little bit, come back to center, then lift up the left shoulder and the left. And take that a couple of times just to see what that feels like. Knees can be slightly bent this whole time in our forward fold to try to keep contact of belly to thigh. Because contact makes us feel a little bit safer. Then hands come back to the base of your spine. Arms come back down and dangle. And then once again, slowly, slowly, slowly rolling yourself up, unraveling yourself to come up to stand. Taking your time, person who gets there to last always wins. See if you can really feel each vertebrae stacking. Give yourself a little wiggle, fix your clothes, do whatever you want. And then when you're ready, look down and see how you're standing on your feet. Just notice, rock a little bit more forward and back. And then close your eyes. And just notice what it's like to stand on your feet with eyes closed, seeing if you can feel each toe, each part of your heel, pressing down into the floor and rocking a little bit forward and a little bit back and rocking a little bit right and a little bit left helps you find the exact midpoint of your foot. So you know you're standing in the middle of each foot because we don't want to be too far back or too far forward. We want to mediate the middle. On your next inhale, you can open your eyes. And then inhale, reach the arms up, press palms together, look up. Exhale, forward fold over your legs. Find yourself in your forward fold again. Take a moment if you want. Hands come down to frame your front foot and then step or hop yourself back to your dog. As you're ready, up dog to down dog, keeping those back legs engaged. Coming back into a down dog with slight bent knees. Take three breaths in your dog. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling to press down, exhaling to let the energy fall down the backs of the legs. Nice, just slight bend in the knees, stick the sits bones up to the sky. Very good. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Good, find yourself there. Right hip is wrapping down so your hips are nice and square. 
And then on your next inhale, bring your right knee to your nose. Exhale, lift your right knee back up, or right leg back up. Inhale, right knee, right elbow. Exhale, right leg back up. Inhale, right knee, left elbow. Hold it for a second. And then step your right foot to your left thumb. So we're in this like cross-legged lunge with a little bit of an ab workout in between. Once again, rock yourself forward and back here. And then pressing down strongly with the front of that right big toe, begin to straighten into your right leg as much as you can and pull that right hip back. So this should just get you a different type of opening in the back of the leg. Totally fine if your leg doesn't get that long or get that straight. It's better to find that contact of belly to thigh and just barely straighten that knee. You can sway your hips right and left. And then bend back into that right knee, get a little bouncy on the back leg, and then hop that left knee to the outside of your right foot. So we're sitting up nice and tall in our seated spinal. Really feel that both sits bones are pressing down. If you don't feel that, you can always lengthen out the bottom leg so that you can feel really nice and stable where you are. Good. On your next inhale, you'll find those right fingertips behind you. Lift that left arm up and then Left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee. You'll inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. And then just find your breath here. Those left toes, if they're out, can really face up towards the sky. If your left knee is bent, you're still thinking about sitting up and nice and tall on those sits bones. Imagine that you're leaning up and back and over something, yeah. And you're seeing if you can look all 180 degrees behind you. One more inhale. One more exhale. Then you'll come back to center. Counter stretch over to the left. Just give yourself a little twist that way. And then unravel your legs. Give them a little shake out in front of you. And find your feet come together. I like finding them in more of a looser diamond shape than in a very intense Baddha So you can have your feet come out a little bit more in front of you, sit up nice and tall on your sits bones. So notice if you're rounding back, you can sit up a little bit taller. You can also sit up on a blanket if that feels nice. And then just forward fold over your legs. Good. Heading into the hips a little bit before we do more hip stuff later. And here, really thinking about your back being nice and long, and then your head and neck can just drop wherever that point is for you. One more inhale here. One more exhale. You'll walk yourself back up, sit up nice and tall, bring those knees together, and then come up into boat pose, Navasana for a little ab intermission. So arms are out nice and long by your shins. Good. And you'll straighten one leg if you can. And put it back down. Straighten the other one. Put it back down. See if you can straighten both. It's totally okay if you can. And then when you're ready, cross the right over the left, come back into your down dog. Good. Rinse it out with an up dog to a down dog on your own time. We'll meet in our down dog. Cool. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up down or left leg up down dog split. Sorry. All right, some lefts are hard sometimes. Inhale, left knee to nose. Exhale, left leg back up. Left knee, left elbow. Come back up. Left knee, right elbow, hold it, and then place your left foot next to your right thumb. Find yourself in your lunge so that left knee is right on top of your left ankle. And when you're ready, you'll press your left front of your left foot down a lot. And that's what encourages that left leg to straighten as much as it can. And that left hip to pull back. Good. And that back heel stays nice and lifted as if it's up against a wall behind you. So we don't have a saggy heel because then that makes our butts be saggy. 
because all of that is connected. Nice. Take a couple more breaths here. You can sway right and left with your hips. One more inhale, one more exhale. Bend into that left knee again. Get a little hoppy off the back knee. And then hop that right knee to the outside of your left. Good. Setting yourself up in a similar way to the other side. So if you had your bottom knee bent, unless the side is very, very different from you, try to keep it bent or straighten it to do whatever you did on the other side. Finger, left fingertips come behind you, right arm reaches up. Right elbow outside of left knee, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist up and over. Finding your breath, shoulders down and back. Noticing what this feels like for you. Noticing how your breath is. Is it getting quicker? Are you able to find it a little bit lower and deeper even in this twist? One more inhale here. One more exhale. You'll come back to center slowly. Unravel to the other side. And then this time, we'll unravel our legs and come up into Navasana right away. Level moment. From here, we'll take 10 lowers and lifts. So sorry if you didn't want to do abs today, but here we are. So you inhale, you'll lower your legs, you'll extend your legs, you'll bring yourself down, and exhale, come back up. One, lower, two. You can do this on your own pace if you want to go slower or faster. I promise I'm counting for once. Five, six, using your breath. You can do it. Keeping those heels and legs together as you're going. Nine and 10. Whenever you're ready, cross that left ankle over the right. And back to your down dog. Good. Take an up dog to a down dog. And then we'll all meet in down dog. Finding our breath here, take three breaths in our dog just to meet here, noticing how the dog feels after doing it a bunch of times already. Good. One more inhale, one more exhale. Then you'll roll your body forward and through back to that plank. You'll wrap those elbows in. So once again, the fronts of the elbows try to go forward. And then in one line, you'll lower yourself down to the ground. Elbows stay close to you. You're on the ground. You can make a palm pillow underneath your forehead. We're rocking yourself right to left. You're rocking your low back and your hips right to left. Good. Taking a moment. Then from here, you're going to find your right arm in a goal post or an L post type shape on the ground. Your legs will stay long. Don't mind me enabling myself with the couch. Then your left fingertips will come underneath your left shoulder. Then you'll roll over onto that right shoulder. Right ear, right side of the face comes down. That left foot can step back behind you. This gives you one more opening in that shoulder. Another way to do it. You can also do this on a wall. And you can rock forward and back here. Good. Taking a couple more breaths. Beginning to open the front of that pec, creating space in that shoulder, kind of counteracting all the rounding that we do as we sit in the chair and lose some energy most throughout our days of sitting in desks. Take one more inhale, one more exhale, come back to the center and just simply switch sides. So left forearm comes into that L shape down on the ground. Right fingertips come underneath your shoulder and you roll onto that left side. That left, that right foot can just rest on top of the left. Right knee can come up here, whatever is best for you. You can always close your eyes here if that feels nice, just to take a moment to go inward as you open up the shoulder. 
finding your breath here, letting things slow down a little bit since we're on our bellies. One more inhale, one more exhale. Bring yourself back to center. Find that palm pillow once again. Let your hips rock right and left. Really release the butt. So notice if you're gripping anything anywhere. Cool. Your hands will come back underneath your shoulders. You'll tuck the toes so your legs get nice and engaged and then trying to come back up to that plank pose in one line whenever you're ready. I don't know if I ever do that right. We're back in our plank. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, down dog. Good. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog's foot. Exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Keeping your back leg lifted this time, that back heel is nice and lifted. Your arms will come forward and out and you'll come into a high crescent lunge. I'll try to describe my arms as best as I can since you probably can't see them, but I will figure that out for another week or eventually move somewhere that's better for yoga. Your arms stay nice and lifted. Begin to straighten into that right leg and see if that helps you wrap that left hip forward a little bit so your hips can stay nice and square. You can always bring your hands to your hips at any time to feel that. And then bend back into that right knee. Arms come up by your ears or stay by your ears. One more inhale here. One more exhale. And then on your next inhale, you'll flip yourself open to a warrior two. So your right knee is right on top of right ankle. Sorry, you're getting the back view this time. But arms are straight out by your shoulders. Knees right on top of heel. Those left toes are kind of turning up towards the front left corner of your mat. You're bending in. You're finding that right angle with your knee. Torso's right on top of hips. And you're looking over out through the middle finger of your right hand. Good. One more inhale. One more exhale. Straighten into that right leg. Left arm comes down the back. Right arm lifts up and over. Nice. And you're gonna turn those right toes in. So now I will fully turn around because I won't give you a full butt view. Then you're gonna keep going down, down, down until you're in a nice wide-legged straddle. Hands come underneath shoulders. If you have your blocks handy, you can always put your hands on blocks here too. And then let yourself just dangle over, bending into the right knee, bending into the left knee. Nice. And once again, finding that same um, arm variation that we did in the beginning. So feel really nice and stable on your feet. You can always try rocking forward and back or right to left again. Then you'll interlace your hands at the base of your spine and let your hands come over. Feel your chin is to chest, your head can shake yes and no. You can rock a little bit right and left with your shoulders. See if they can come a, week, a little more closer to the front of your space or the side of your room. Good. And still thinking about having that nice light bend in your knees. Nice, Anna. You adjusted. Good. Take one more inhale here. One more exhale. You'll bring your hands down back to the base of your spine. Hands come down underneath your shoulders. And then you'll begin to walk yourself back to the front of your space. So right foot is in front, passing through your right lunge. And then you'll hop that left foot in a little bit. The left toes, once again, come up towards the front left of your mat and you're in a pyramid. So if this is just a little relaxed pyramid for now. We'll come back to it again. Extend the spine, inhale. And then forward fold over your legs just for a couple of breaths. You can swing your hips from right to left. One more inhale. One more exhale. Hands come down, bend into that right knee. Make your way back from your down dog. Cool. On your next inhale, up dog. Come back into your down dog. On your next inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split. Exhale, step your left foot to your left side. Coming into that high lunge on this side, whenever you feel stable in your legs, arms come forward, out and up. 
So we're really arcing ourselves forward to come up. Bending into that left knee, straighten it for a second just to really notice how square you can get your hips and then keeping your hips as square as possible, then back into that left knee. Making sure the whole time your knees are tracking over your toes, that back heel stays nice and lifted. Hands can stay on hips if you like that more. One more inhale, one more exhale, and then you'll unravel yourself into your warrior two. So knee is right on top of ankle. Again, those right toes face up towards the front of the space. Left arms come, or both arms come straight out over shoulders, torsos over hips, so many things to think about. You can imagine that someone's pulling back with that right middle finger as they press forward with your left knee. So that's the diagonal that we want of movement to really find ourselves nice and stable in the middle. One more inhale, one more exhale, straighten into that left leg, right arm comes down the back, reach that left arm up and over. Look up underneath your armpit, stay stable if you can. Those left toes turn in and then continue arcing over and come into a forward fold. Good. Taking a couple of breaths here. We won't do an arm variation on this side, but if you want to bend the left side, the right side, you want to take it a little bit deeper and try to get into skandasana, you can. Otherwise, just stay up and just take a couple bends. One more inhale. One more exhale. Continue to walk your hands back to the front of the space. You pass through your left lunge, hop that right foot in, right toes come face up towards the upper right corner. You're in your pyramid. If you have blocks, your hands could also come up on them too. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, forward fold. Really thinking of pulling that left hip back as the right one comes forward so your hips can stay square. One more breath. You can sway and hands come down, then into that left knee. Make your way back into your down dog. Take one more up dog. Two down dog. Amazing. We'll take one more pyramid variation. So just to round it all out. Inhale, right leg up, down dog, slip. This time bend the knee and open up the hip and you can take some circles with your knee and your ankle, keeping your shoulders nice and square. So it's really nice sometimes to be like, ah, but don't do that. But extend the right leg long and then step your right foot to your right thumb. Cool. From here, spin the sole of that left foot down and make your way up into your warrior one. So this time your hips are staying nice and square, your knees are down, or your right knee is bent right over your right toes. You can hop that left foot even more to the left or up just so you feel stable. Your hands are on your hips. Warrior one. Good. So from here, we're gonna straighten our legs so you're done with the warriors on this side. Feel free to adjust yourself if you need. And then you're gonna bring your arms out to either side. I'm just gonna show you the arms. Stay in your warrior, straight, stay in your straight legs. And then you're going to bring yourself either to reverse, what is this, interlace, reverse fist bump, or, or if you can, reverse prayer. Our shoulders are nice and open from a lot of the shoulder stuff we did today. So see how your shoulders are at today. Once again, always nice to have something to work towards to you. And then your forward fold over your legs, which is like, ah. Both a balancing exercise and a lovely shoulder opener. You can feel making sure that your legs are on train track. So if your right leg is in the same line as your left leg, separate them to the right and left. Just a couple more breaths here. Finding your balance. Shoulders down and back on whatever variation you have. And then when you're ready, you can bring yourself back up, coming out of it as we came into it. Let your arms just unravel. Try not to shake them, but you can give your shoulders a little roll like you're in some fun dance. And then hands come back down, come back to down dog. Cool. 
Up dog to down dog. Rinse it out before we do the other side. Inhale, lift the left leg up, down dog split. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Take some circles with that ankle and knee, but keeping your right arm and left arm and shoulders in the same place. So it's like you wouldn't know what you're doing with your legs. Inhale, extend that left leg. Exhale, step it to your left thumb. Setting your legs up for warrior one. So I always pop my right foot out a little bit more to the right. My left toes stay facing forward. My hips both stay facing forward as if I'm in a lunge and I reach my arms forward out and up. Good. You can really try to wrap that right hip forward a little bit more. Arms stay up. And then you'll straighten into that left leg once you feel done. Arms come down and then take whichever arm variation you want to take on this side. So either interlace, whoops, interlace, fist bump, or reverse prairie. And whenever you have that, inhale, shoulders down and back, look up, and then forward fold over your legs. So nice. Finding your balance. Both knees can be slightly bent here if that helps you stay up. Press, thinking of pressing down two with the back of the right foot so you feel the whole surface area of that back foot helping hold you up. One more inhale. One more exhale. Come back up to stand. Bring those arms down. Give yourself a little wiggle in the shoulders. Hands come down. And then make your way back into your down dog. Take an up dog to a down dog if you want one. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Bend the knee, open up again just for a second. Extend that right knee, your right leg, and then bring your right knee behind your right wrist for pigeon on the right side. So this is where I love a blanket. Luckily, Conjo has 500 blankets along with all the other random stuff that's in this apartment that needs to be cleaned, but that's besides the point. So you can find any blanket or couch cushion that you want and put it underneath your hips to help bring the ground closer to your hips so there's less space between the ground and your body. And then when you have that, you can walk yourself forward. If you have blocks and you know how to use them, feel free to use them. Otherwise, just find a nice diamond shape with your arms. Your forehead can rest on the ground or if you want another pillow or something underneath your forehead, you can use that too. And you know when pigeon comes, we're done with the hard exertion of effort, so. Really let your body and yourself convert over into more of this being phase of just letting yourself breathe, still following your breath, but knowing that the hard, hard effort of holding ourselves up and doing a lot of standing poses is done. Taking a few more breaths here. You can imagine that someone's pressing on your left hip and your right shoulder spreading your back apart, then your right hip and your left shoulder spreading that part of your back apart. So you're really letting your whole torso just hang over and rest over your legs. One more inhale here, one more exhale, and you'll begin to press yourself up with your arms, hands will walk back underneath shoulders, you'll tuck those left toes behind you so your left leg comes nice and strong, and then you'll lift that right knee up, come back to your dog. If you want to do an up dog to down dog, you can to flush it out, otherwise You'll lift that left leg up when you're ready. You'll bend that left knee for a second. You'll extend that left leg nice and long. And then you'll bring that left knee behind your left wrist all the way over to the left side of your mat, setting yourself up in a similar way to the other side. Blanket can come underneath your hips, underneath your perineum. 
And then once you're there, extend the spine nice and long and really lengthen yourself up and over your shin. Making that diamond-like shape with your arms to let your shoulders really relax. Forehead can come to the ground. Or if you want to put it on a pillow or something else underneath you, that's also great. Cool. Just taking your breaths here. Letting yourself be. Letting yourself stay in a pose without having to flow to something else for a second. Notice how that feels different than the other stuff we were doing before. You can once again rock your forehead right and left. You can try to make sure that that right pinky toenail is pressing down onto the ground so that your hips stay nice and square. Notice if you're holding any tension in your face or your jaw and try to release that. Take one more inhale here. And one more exhale. Then when you're ready, if you want to stay a little bit longer, you can, because after this, we'll just make our way into our final pose. Take your time, but begin to walk yourself back up. Tuck those back toes. Flip that leg. Step your left leg back. Last down dog. So take anything that you want to do here. You can move your props off to the side. Take one more nice breath in your dog whenever you get there. And then once that's complete, you'll place your knees down onto the ground. You'll sit to one side and you'll find your blanket if you didn't just use it. Otherwise, it should be pretty handy. And then if you are near a wall or a couch, we're going to end in legs up the wall or legs up the couch, if that's the right term. Um, but yeah, but it's nice to have a blanket for your low back and just above your butt to rest on. So I'm going to use the couch because it's the focal point of this whole yoga class. So I'm going to come to one of the sides of my blanket and sit next to it as if I'm like a mermaid in the little mermaid. And then I'm going to sit on my blanket and just bring my feet in my knees or bring my shins, my feet on top of the couch. If you are near a wall, I think Heather, you were near a wall, you do the same thing, but put the blanket right up against the wall and then just roll yourself on over and let your legs come up the wall and then just wiggle yourself so that you are really nice and flush up against the wall. I just have a, this couch much closer, which is nice. So take your time to set yourself up. We started a couple minutes late, so we'll get a nice little long-ish moment of rest before we have to go back out into our day, but really take your time here. If you feel like anything's uncomfortable, like your hair is in an annoying place or the blanket wasn't folded well, redo it so that you can really find a nice resting place. And hands can come on your low belly. You can find one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. Hands can come down by your sides, palm face up or they can just come into like a starfish-like shape, whatever feels the most comfortable for you to let yourself completely rest and just let yourself be held by the floor, the wall and the couch and gravity is where we wanna find ourselves. You can let your eyes come to a close if they haven't already. And really find your breath here. See if you can remember what one of your first breaths in your child's pose felt like. It's totally okay if you can't. But then notice how your breath is now. As you exhale, see if there's a little bit more tension from something that can be released, whether it's your face, your hand, your foot, anything.
And just let yourself breathe. Let yourself lay here. If you notice your mind wandering off to thoughts, try to bring it back. The thoughts will always come, but just a matter of if you dwell on them and go down one of the thought holes, see if you can bring yourself back and be an observant of the thought so that it passes by you as it comes and then you can come back to your breath. Take one more inhale and one more exhale wherever you are. And then you'll begin to bring some wiggles back into your hands and your feet. If your legs are off the wall, you'll let your knees just bend so your feet place on the wall. And then you can just let yourself roll over onto any side. If your legs are on the couch, your feet can come place on the couch for a second. And then once again, you can roll yourself onto either side. Just take a moment in whatever fetal position um, direction you get to, keeping your gaze soft and your eyes nice and closed. And once you've taken a breath there, you can come and sit on the same blanket in any direction. You can come sit facing the camera, whatever feels good to you. You'll find yourself either cross-legged or in virasana just for a moment as we close out. Hands can come face up on your thighs for a sense of being open and available to everything that comes after you put in a lot of effort. Something will always come. You will always be there to witness and receive everything that comes after your efforts. We'll take one breath all together to close out. So we'll bring our hair hands to press at the center of our chest at heart center. And we'll exhale our air out to meet on empty. And we'll take a nice big inhale through the nose holding it at the top, and then big sigh, exhale out the mouth. <sighs> Come back to your normal breath. Noticing how you're feeling, taking stock of how your body is in this moment, and giving yourself gratitude and recognition for taking the time out of your day to practice, to move your body, to help you feel good. Gratitude to being able to practice on Zoom together from around the world, which is always very cool. And just a moment of gratitude for your mind and body, for all the involuntary things they do for you every single day. That in yoga, we like to bring some consciousness into. We'll bring our thumb knuckles up to third eye center in between our eyebrows. And then practice with a final bow, honoring the practice. Thank you all so much. Thank you for coming. I will stop the recording. Thank you, Thank Dana. You,